What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2019 AP Calculus AB free response question number five. So let's get started. So for part A, we want to find the area of region R. And what we need to be able to do this is we have to know first which function is the top function and which function is the bottom function. So h of x is going to be the top function here. And g of x, the cosine function, is going to be the bottom function. And the way I could tell is that this just looks like the parabola with a negative coefficient in front of the x squared that it's frowning in a sense. And then a cosine curve has a wave-like feature to it. So that's how I know which one is which. You could also plug in x equals zero and compare the y-intercepts, but you know, there's whatever way helps you identify the top and bottom. So now from here, the idea is that any one of those cross sections for area is a rectangle and the base is gonna be dx and the vertical distance, we do the top function minus the bottom function. And that's gonna be h of x minus g of x. But this would just tell us the area of one slice. Like this counts as what we would call dA. So if I want to find the area of the whole thing, then I'm going to do the integral from where this region starts at 0 to where it stops at x equals 2. And then my integrand is going to be h of x minus g of x times dx. So h of x, we just have to plug this in now, is 6 minus, and we have 2 times x minus 1 squared. And then we're going to subtract, and we have to make sure we put g of x in parentheses. We're subtracting negative 2 plus 3 cosine pi over 2x. I honestly thought that this was the toughest part of the whole question, just because it was so tedious. So now here, all we have to do is just be very careful when we evaluate this. So we're going to go piece by piece. The antiderivative of 6 is 6x. The antiderivative of the second piece, you could do a u substitution, but anytime your u term gives you a derivative of 1. Notice the derivative of x minus 1 is 1. That means you could skip the u sub and just treat this as its own variable. So I would have x minus 1 to the third power divided by 3, but I have a coefficient of 2. So when I divide by 3, that's just going to give me a minus 2 thirds in front. And now I have minus. I could leave this. The antiderivative of negative 2 gives us negative 2x. And then the antiderivative of the last piece well, this one, it helps to have this little formula here. We could once again do a u sub, but anytime my u term is linear, like pi over 2 times x, that's just a linear factor, then what I like to know is little shortcuts like this. So this is one that could come in handy for the free response. The antiderivative of cosine of a constant times x is 1 over the constant times sine constant x plus c. So here, what I would do is, all I'm going to look at is the antiderivative it's going to give us sine pi over 2x, but then notice here it's like our k value is equal to pi over 2. So 1 over pi over 2 is going to give us 2 over pi. So I would have 3 times 2 over pi in front of this. And now I'm just going to throw in my brackets. We're evaluating this using FTC1, but we're going from 0 to 2. So now the rest of this question is just plugging in very carefully. So we're going to plug in 2. We have 6 times 2, which is going to give us 12. And now we have minus 2 thirds. We get 2 minus 1, which is 1 to the third power. So we could write it in, but that's just going to simplify to 1. Minus, and now we plug in 2. We're going to have negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then we've got plus. This simplifies to 6 over pi. And we've got sine of pi over 2 times 2 is just pi. And sine of pi is 0, so this piece just cancels out right away. So that's plugging in the upper limit. Now we're going to plug in the lower limit and subtract. So anytime you subtract, just remember, put a jumbo parenthesis here, or just any parenthesis, so that you don't make any sign errors. So now you plug in 0, you get 6 times 0, minus 2 thirds times 0 minus 1 is negative 1 to the third power. Then we have minus parenthesis, but lucky for us, when we plug in 0 to this last part, everything just equals 0. So we get 0 plus sine of 0 is also 0. And now we could just simplify this nicely. So we have 12 minus, this is just going to give us 2 thirds. And then minus minus 4 changes to plus 4. And then this part, be a little bit careful, but you got negative 2 thirds. Negative 1 to the third is negative 1. So you get negative 2 thirds times negative 1 is positive 2 thirds. But you're subtracting positive 2 thirds, so you just get an extra minus 2 thirds. And now combine stuff, you got 12 plus 4 is 16. And you get negative 2 thirds minus 2 thirds is minus 4 thirds. And to be honest, on the AP test, they don't take off points if you don't simplify. So technically, you could stop at this step. But if you want to showcase your arithmetic, convert 16 to a denominator of 3. And that's 48 over 3 minus 4 over 3. 
And this is just going to equal 44 over 3. Now, for part B, we're told that region R is the base of a solid. And each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis has area given by this function here. And we want to find the volume of that resulting solid. So this part B is Cavalieri's principle. And what made this a little bit tricky is that most Cavalieri's principle questions will say, take the cross-sections and build them into squares or build them into equilateral triangles, isosceles right triangles. They'll give you some sort of geometric figure. But all they said here is that each of those cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, whatever weird shape they are, we have a function that'll tell us the actual area of each of those, and it's called a of x. And the thickness of all of these shapes here is dx. So the volume of any one of those slices is a of x dx. The concept of Cavalieri's principle is that you could find the volume by doing the area of the base times the height. So once again, the area, they're not giving us any specific geometric figure, but they are giving us a function that tells us the area of any one of these slices here, like the area of the base. So using that idea, the volume of the whole thing is going to be the integral going from 0 to 2. And then what we have here is we're just doing the area function times dx. So that's just going to give us 1 over x plus 3 times dx. And now from here, you just have to do FTC part 1. So the antiderivative is going to be natural log, absolute value of x plus 3, and we're going from 0 to 2. Oh, and of course, FTC1, I'm talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, so now here, we just go forward with this, and we've got natural log of, we plug in 2, we got 2 plus 3 is 5, minus natural log of 0 plus 3 is 3. And then we could get rid of those absolute values because 5 and 3 are both positive, so we could just do this. And once again, you could leave your answer like this. If you want to showcase your knowledge of properties of logs, you could combine it into a single log like this. And once again, be mindful, we didn't have to do a u substitution here because the derivative of x plus 3 is 1. So anytime your u term, once again, has a derivative of 1, you could bypass the u sub process and just go forward with the antiderivative. So for the last part of this question here, the trap is that you have to read this very carefully and make sure that you write, but do not evaluate. Do not waste time doing the actual antiderivative. But we need an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid when r is rotated about the line y equals 6. So we go up here to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is our axis of revolution. Now, the main idea you need for the AP test is you have to know when you're going to be using the disk or the washer. And notice that except at x equals 1, from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 2, there's a space between the axis of revolution, which acts as the center. So the axis or the center is what we're spinning R around. So in this case, it's going to be the washer. And it was kind of annoying that they use big R to define the region because usually big R represents the big radius when you're talking about the washer method. But what I'll use instead, sorry for my poor artwork, is I'll call this R with a subscript O versus R with the subscript I for like outer radius and inner radius. So we'll just we'll just uh, label it differently. So the idea is that when you're finding the volume of a washer, it's going to be the volume of one slice is pi times you have your outer radius squared minus your inner radius squared, and then dx or dy. But in this case, we're spinning around a we're spinning around a horizontal axis, so that means we're going to be in terms of x. So from here, what we have to do is just be very careful when we define our outer radius and our inner radius. So our outer radius, if you remember from before, we said that h of x was the top function. And we said that g of x was the bottom function here. So when you're defining the value for your radii, just make sure that you always, 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 always start from the center. The most common mistake I see with these questions is that people just do h minus g. And remember, that was for part A when you're finding area between two curves, or in some cases when you're doing Cavalieri's principle. But when you're doing volume of revolution, you're always going from the center, the axis, to one of the curves. So the outer radius is going to go from the line y equals 6 to the curve g of x, because that's the bigger distance. So the distance between them, you could do the top function minus the bottom function. And technically, this is the line y equals 6. 
So I'm doing 6 minus g of x. And then for our inner radius, we're going from we're going from the line y equals 6 to h of x. So that's going to be 6 minus h of x. So now we can set up our integral. The volume is going to be the integral going from 0 to 2. And now we have pi times, we have the outer radius squared. So this part, we have to be careful with the parentheses, but we have 6 minus g of x squared minus, and then we have 6 minus h of x squared. And one thing I should mention in terms of the rubrics is that when you're graded on this, if you mess up the order and say g of x minus 6, h of x minus 6, they're still going to give you full credit, but I think it's good practice to set this up right and do the top minus the bottom. Uh, and also, if you leave out the parentheses here surrounding the entire r uh, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared, you're not going to lose points for that either. But once again, I think it's sloppy if you leave out the big parentheses because then dx is technically only attached to the last piece. But this is going to be the solution to part C. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the 2019 Calc AB question five. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.